Hi everyone, Jamie Madison here. I'm gonna start the video off a little bit different today. We're doing this cute little bee spinner card. So to start, I've already stamped and heat embossed my images. I did all my heat embossing with black. It's from the Recollections. I just did a little haul video on that, so if you're interested in it, you can check out my video below. So to start, I'm gonna go ahead and um, go in with my Arteza brushes. So this color that I'm using for the B is number 151, and that is in acid yellow. So I'm gonna first start with my base, which is that very light yellow, and then I'm gonna go back in with the number 128 bumblebee yellow. So the bumblebee yellow is gonna be more of my shading. So I first go in with the acid yellow, and then I go around the sides and the corners with the bumblebee yellow. And I just blend that through, and then I use my water brush to go through and make sure everything's blended nicely. So with these images, I got this stamp set from Hello Bluebird. This little cute bee stamp set I just could not resist doing. And as soon as I saw this bee looking like he's flying around having fun, I wanted to make him into a spinner. That's the reason why I got this stamp set was I had this cute little bee in my mind doing cute little twirlies in the air um, around some flowers. So I was just super excited to get that stamp set and actually be able to do my first spinner card. So that is why this video is a tad bit long, is this was my first ever spinner card that I've ever done. So I hope you guys enjoy this longer video. Um, I try not to do this long of videos, but um, that one just so happened to turn out this way. Also with this card, I did not put the colors listed on the screen because I used a lot of colors for this card and it would have pretty much filled the entire screen up with how many colors I end up having to use. And then on his body, the black I used was 104 and that is a Noor. So the Noor color um, went for his head and his body and then I also blended that with my water brush to kind of give him some highlight as well. For his wing, I used 173 in ice blue. So I went through his whole wing with the ice blue, and then I went back over just on the tips of the, not the tips, because it's not by his body. So right by his body, I went in with the Arctic blue. That is 117. So yes, I didn't put the colors on the screen because it would have filled the entire screen up with all the colors for the bee and then the flowers and the leaves as well. So I figured I would just let you know and I will list them down below in the order that I use them. So for the bee, I'll have the bee separately and then the flower separately and the leaves. So then for the flowers, I fast forward through them. I used for the flowers Bubble Bath Pink. That is 187. I did the whole flower with the 187. And then to do some um, extra depth and shadowing, I went back through with Punch Pink in 195. Then I blended that through with those two colors. So pretty much everything that I used besides the B only had two colors. So the flower top had two colors, the leaves had two colors, and the B had um, six colors. And then for the leaves, what I did was I went through with the 157, and that is in chamomile. I colored the whole base of the flower with the chamomile. And then I went back through with the crocodile green in 126, just on the base end, and blended that up with my water brush. I really like the way that the leaves turned out. They have nice, pretty definition, and it was really easy to do. This card was a lot of fun to make, and there are so many options that you could do with this stamp set. So to start with my background, I brought out my stencils that I just recently had, so I had to use these. I was so excited about getting them. So I went ahead and got the My Favorite Things Drift in Hills, and I started that with the Distressed Ink in Mowed Lawn. So I blended Mowed Lawn. Um, on the bottom part and then I rotated the stencil just to do more of a background with the same mode lawn Then for some definition. I went back through it with some evergreen bow um, It's almost a blue But whenever it goes with the green it really p makes the green pop more 
So they did go very well together. It just deepened that green color that I was looking for. These stencils were very easy to use and they wiped up so clean. Um, definitely loving them. Can't wait to do more cards with them as well. So what I did with the stencil is I just flipped it over so I could start working on my sky and my sky wouldn't blend into my grass and make the grass disordered. So to start with my sky, I went in with some more Distressed Ink in Antique Linen. So I did my Antique Linen first and just started blending that up. I wanted this to be a very soft background. I didn't want the background to overwhelm the flowers and the bee. I wanted them to be more of a background colors instead of taking the show. So with this background, I just blended my antique linen up. I wanted this background to be so soft. I wanted you to barely see the clouds peeking out. So with the antique linen, I blended it a little halfway up and then I went in with my spun sugar these are all distressed inks. Really enjoying these sets. I've got a whole bunch new distressed inks lately, so I've been really wanting to use them. So with the antique linen, I would blend that up and go back over it with my sponge sugar. Then I would go back over it with the sponge sugar still wet on my sponge, blend that through the antique linen. I kind of blended those two colors together so you really couldn't tell where the pink stopped or where the pink began. And then the yellow, I went back through with a couple clouds as well on top of the pink. So it really gave it more of a deeper effect. Then at the top, I went in with my shaded lilac. That was just to give it some more deeper colors towards the top, more of like a sunset or a sunrise, whichever you wanted to do. To finish the background up, I went through with my pen and I just outlined the grassy hills to give it a little bit more um, definition. I then took my die cut circles. These are from Lawn Fawn. These are the Stitch Circle Long Cuts by Lawn Fawn. The circle dies are super cute. The only issue that I have with them is it's not that much size comparison. So you have a very large size with these. It's very hard to do a spinner card when the circle is so far away from each other. For So for this card, I had to use a quarter instead of a penny because I had too much room in between and the penny would have just fell right out. So you can still use these stitched circle die cuts. You just have to use a little bit bigger of a coin or object that you're going to use for your spinner. So it was no big deal for me, and I still got the spinner card to spin very well. I went ahead and went through with my double-sided foam tape. I just doubled the backing up so I had a nice, good, um, deep card there for my coin to be able to move fluidly on my card. So this was the first spinner card, like I was saying. So this was all trial, trial and error. I wasn't quite sure what I was actually doing. I wasn't sure how much to space, how far I needed to leave for my coin. So everything is just completely new to me, but it was so much fun playing around with this, and I love the way it ended up looking. I think I'm going to send this card to my niece. I think she would really enjoy it. So before I pull off my tape, I just want to line up my circle. I figured that would be a little bit easier to do uh, knowing where that circle was going to be without it sticking yet to the base. So I just took a pencil and just outlined my circle and then went in with my Tombow glue and just glued that on. I do like the Tombow glue because it gives you a few minutes or seconds depending on how much you use um, to kind of adjust how your card's going to be. So I just lined that up and then adhered that. I just went ahead and lined that up and then took that centerpiece and popped that up with some foam tape as well. This is the, also doubled just like the card so it would be flush. I just wanted to make sure that my coin was going to move easily. As you see I was using a nickel here. I ended up changing that to a quarter. Quarters are a little bit lighter and it wasn't as thick but it was big enough that it wouldn't fall out either. But a trick I do with my spinner to make it spin a little bit easier was I took my powder tool and went around all the edges as long and on the coin as well in the foam tape. So nothing was going to be sticky. Everything was going to move very, very easily. It worked really, really well. As you can see, I'm testing out the spinner. And that is when I noticed that the nickel was going to be just a tad bit too thick. So I switched to a quarter and it worked so much better. 
So here I'm just lining up my flowers. I'm trying to figure out how I want them to positioned. And then I went ahead and started gluing them into place. With this stamp set, it also comes with little stems so you can make your own flowers um, as long as you want them to be. Um, unfortunately, they don't come as long as I wanted it to be, so I just took two and butted them up together. I knew that they were going to be covered by flowers anyways, so it wasn't going to be an issue. I then just adhered the little buds onto the stem along with the leaves that I cut out as well. Fussy cutting these flowers was not hard at all. I didn't get into super detailed work with them. I didn't go around every single little um, flower petal. I kind of just did around the base and left a little bit of a white border. I was fine with it. Um, normally, I don't like any white borders, but this card, it was okay for me. But you can do whatever you want to do with your fussy cutting. If you have a die cut, that works even better. I love die cuts, but right now... Um, not too much in my budget to do the stamp and the die cut. Um, I only have a small budget for my crafts or I will spend way too much money, which is not a bad thing. So I just went ahead and started hearing these little buds with my Tombow glue and I kind of just placed them as it looked like they needed to be. I wanted this card to be very full of flowers. I wanted this bee to look like he was having the best time of his life in this little valley of little pink flowers. I'm not quite sure what kind of flowers these are. If you know, comment below. I would love to know. I really hope you guys don't mind this video being so long. Um, I did try to cut it down as long as I could. This card took me two hours to make. Um, like I said, it was my first spinner card, so I really took my time with it. Um, so that also resulted in very long recording time and to figure out how to cut it all down that it's not, you know, 40 minute long video was very hard for me. Um, I feel like I wanted to show you everything that I did, um, but most of it's not needed as well. So I hope this um, video isn't too long and too boring for you. Also, do you guys enjoy the music um, with the video or would you just rather me just keep talking um, about anything and everything? instead of having the music in the background. I'd really like to know. So I went ahead and took the Love You die cut from Simon Says Stamp. This is the one that I just got in my um, recent haul. And I doubled those up um, with some pink cardstock that I had and then just used my Tombow glue to glue it. But it, um, that Love You kind of overhang, so I just went ahead and trimmed that off a little bit right there on the little curly Q-tip. Uh, worked very well, you can't even tell. And it wasn't, the love you wasn't high enough that it obstructed the bee as well whenever he's flying. I did use two um, foam circles on the bee. So he is up a little bit higher because I didn't want him to get in the way of any of the flowers. But he's not like super high off the card either. So I just went ahead and glued the love you. It fit like absolutely perfectly in this little circle. And then I just trimmed off the flower tips at the very bottom of the card. And we are almost done with the bee. Oh, it's looking so cute. Um, I, You know me, I had to add my bling to it. I need my little rhinestones on there. This is the Studio Cadia. These are those new April crystals that I just got. Um, pretty much everything in this video is all new stuff that I just got, even the jewel picker. I'm getting a little bit better with it. Um, I did take a little bit of tissue paper on my jewel picker just to kind of get the tack a little bit not as strong on it, and it actually ended up working a lot better. So I just put these little cute crystals all over this card. There is some absolutely clear ones in this um, jewel set, which I didn't even know. So that was a nice little surprise. And then I went with my Winka Stella over all the flowers and the bee's wings to give him some sparkle as well. Like he's playing in the pollen he got all over him. Um, he's just having a, a great time. And then I went over the Love You also with my Winka Stella. So we are pretty much done with the card. This little card was so much fun to make and so much fun to play around with all these new you know items and stuff I had so much fun <laughs> I really did I had so much fun so here is the little guy in action as you see that quarter works very well you can hardly see the quarter unless it's at a weird angle um, and he just zooms through that so thanks everyone for watching everyone have a great rest of your day and I'll see you next time bye